weekend. We're back for another great episode of Ram Center. I'm your host, the one and only Ashley Williams. And it's your boy, Josh Swift. And Ashley, how was your Halloween weekend? It was great. I had a lot of fun celebrating one of my friend's birthdays. Oh, me too. Really? But what were you? Like, what was your costume? See, I didn't really dress up this year for the first time wow. ever. I know, I was just cute. But <laughs> what was your costume? I was Superman, my, one of my favorite superheroes. Okay. And I had my cape, I had my shirt out, and my... Clark Kent, uh, Clark Kent glasses, excuse oh, me. that's good. But yeah. That's good. I was Superman two years ago. So oh. we could do, maybe next year. We maybe next year. Okay. But enough about that. Let's talk about some sports. Starting off with the football team, they played Cheney University this past Saturday. The Golden Rams must have scared Cheney off the field because we beat them 41-20. to 20. All right. Quarterback Pat Moriarty went 17 for 30 for 251, uh, 251 yards and three touchdowns. One of the touchdown passes were caught by A.J. DiPietro, and of course, my boy Tim Brown had to get one for 48 <laughs> yards. The Golden Rams are tied for first place in the PSAC. You can catch the Rams in action this Saturday against East Stroudsburg, where they look to share the PSAC title if they win. But if you can't make the game, it will also be aired live on Sports Fever TV. That's great. That I know great. my parents love watching the Westchester games from home. Definitely. But I know my Rams are going to get the job done. So let's go out there and support them. Now, hitting it over to golf, the men and women's team did fairly well at PSAC. The men's team placed third, but they didn't repeat what they did mm. last year. But there were some great individual performances from senior Corey Smith, who placed fourth, and Drew Patterson, who placed fifth. The women's team placed fourth overall, and freshman Michaela Simon tied for sixth place individually. Good job, good job, Rams. You had a great season. Way to finish out strong. Yes, indeed. They really worked hard this season, Ashley. They did. But let's dive into what the swimming, did, swimming team did last week. The men's team finished the tri-meet by sweeping Lehigh and East Stroudsburg. Right. Also on the women's side, they split the tri-meet against Lehigh and Stroudsburg as well. Both of our Golden Rams will be back in the water around Thanksgiving for the Pitt Invitational. Sounds like a big Invitational there. Definitely. Well, Josh, our women's field hockey team ended the regular season with a bang. Oh. They got a 4-1 to one victory over Seton Hill on Saturday. Our defense was way too much for their offense. Always. They only got three shots at the goal the entire time. Only made one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel Topi scored the first two goals that put the Rams in the lead 2-0 at halftime, and Dale Position scored the other two goals of the game. Westchester travels to Cookstown on Tuesday for the PSAC quarterfinals. I wish them the best of luck at the game. I know they can pull out a win. All right, now let's throw it to Marcellus for a Ram history report. I wonder who he has this time. Marcellus? Hey Rams, what's going on? It's your boy Marcellus here to bring you a little blast from the past about some of your very own sports teams. Today, I will be discussing the men and women's cross-country teams, giving a brief history of both teams' past accolades. So let's get started. Andrew Huber begins his ninth year as head coach of the Westchester University's men and women's cause country squads, as well as serving as the athletic department as its summer camps coordinator. Huber previously served as the director of both the cross country and track and field programs here at Westchester University. A native of, West of Chester County, Huber has produced 13 all academic cause country and track and field athletes, 10 all academic cause country and track and field teams, 63 PSAC All-Conference selections, 21 PSAC Conference champions, 26 NCAA Division II qualifiers, and 10 NCAA Division II All-Americans. In addition, the 2006 to 2007 men's outdoor track and field team produced the highest PSAC championship finish, which was fifth place since 1983. Some facts about Coach Huber are that he is a 1995 graduate of Messiah College with a bachelor's in English. Huber was also a six-time MAC All-American for the Falcons during his career, as well as a school state medalist in the Junior Olympics National Qualifier. Huber also holds a Master's in Sports Administration from California University of Pennsylvania and has recently competed in his seventh marathon. Huber's athletes won 22 PAA District 1 medals and cross country in four years, as well as the PAA District 1 cross country championship in the year 2000. Huber was named the Southern Chester and County League coach of the same year that season. We wish both the men and women's team luck as on November 7th, they will be participating in the NCAA Atlantic Regionals at Lock Haven at 10 a.m. sharp. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Well, this is all the history I got for you guys today. Make sure you stay tuned to Rise Ram Center each week for all your sports needs. I'm Marcellus Council Jones signing off. Stay golden, Rams. Now over to Josh with this day in sports.
Welcome to This Day in Sports segment. On This Day in Sports, in 1974, the Atlanta Braves traded baseball great Hank Aaron to the Milwaukee Brewers for outfielder Dave May. Both teams would go on not to make the playoffs the following season. On behalf of Ram Center, we provide this week's Day in Sports event. Now let's throw it over to James with his athlete spotlight. James? Hi, I'm James Jackson, giving you a spotlight on one of our WCU athletes. And as all athletes know, Playing sports come with a whole set of challenges and adversities that one must overcome. Now take all of those obstacles and tack on being born completely deaf. Changes the game, doesn't it? For local Westchester University field hockey star Dale Postian, this is something she's had to battle with her entire life. And she'll be the first one to tell you she's stronger because of it. When I was born, I was born completely deaf and my parents didn't know until I was about four years old. Um, usually when a baby's born, they, um, the doctors will go take them through a screen test to see if their you know, eyesight's correct and their hearing's correct. Well, I didn't have to go through that testing screening because it wasn't, um, didn't, you didn't have to do it back then, but now you do. So I wore hearing aids when I was about four years old to I was seven years old, but they weren't working out for me since it was usually for people that have slight hearing loss and I had profound hearing loss. So when I was seven, my mom decided to get me a cochlear implant which is um, medically, surgically, medically, they put a magnet inside your ear and they have an outside device. So that actually helps administer sound inside your ear where a hearing aid cannot. So I got that when I was seven, uh, seven years old on my right ear and then I got the left side done when I was 14 years old. Once this happened, her grades then skyrocketed and she was able to take more advanced courses in high school. Although Dale may not have been behind from a school aspect, she always excelled on the sports field. She started playing field hockey at around age seven, learning from her mother. Most of the children her age were starting to get into soccer, but as usual, Dale didn't follow in the footsteps of most of her peers. In high school, Dale was a part of a program called the Junior High Performance Squad for the USA field hockey team. Um, high Performance is a training program sponsored by USA Field Hockey and run by USA Field Hockey for elite athletes, mainly at the Division I level um, that are in college. And what you do is you train over the course of May, uh, May and June, and then you try to make a tournament squad. So the High Performance is about 60, 70 girls per region. So I was in the New Jersey region. And um, luckily I was able to make the tournament squad, which is something that's pretty hard to make. And they usually take about 22 girls from each region of the high performance squad into the tournament squad. She continues to use her disability as motivation both on and off the field. Every day is a new challenge, expressed Dale. But I use sports as a foundation for life. Work hard and good results will come out of that. Um, you know, I will never hear the best out of everyone, even, you know, like normal hearing people like you guys, but, you know, I just have to say to myself, like, you know, it, who cares, you know, you got this, and you just have to keep a strong mentality no matter what. Dill thanks her coaches and teammates that have helped her along this journey of hers, but most importantly, she dedicates her success to her loving mother. Dale stated how hard this was for her mother to accept, but she never lost faith. Her mom taught her to always give 100% effort in whatever you're doing, and not let anybody tell you that you cannot achieve something. Dale continues to be an inspiration to her teammates, coaches, family, and the entire Westchester community. As midfielder, she's led her Golden Rams to a current number two ranking in the nation and continues to improve both on the field and in the classroom every day. Dale is a great example of what it means to persevere through adversity because oftentimes life is going to throw obstacles your way. But as she has demonstrated, just because there's a goalie, doesn't mean you can't score. I'm James Jackson, and this is your Ram Spotlight. Ashley, I think it's time for a little throwback with our Back in the Day segment. All right, sounds great. Who's up first? First off is my boy, my day one, Camille Max on the football team, plays right. fullback. He sure has grown into those shoulder pads. And definitely with that hair, my goodness. <laughs> well, up next is Victor Polakov on the men's swimming team. Look how far he's come now. Definitely. Hopefully he's, he was definitely winning there, and now he's winning now. Definitely. So let's see what Samara has in store for us with Pro Sports. Abby Wambach, the world's all-time leading goal scorer in the history of international soccer, has announced her retirement from the U.S. women's national team. At age 35, she is ending an illustrious 15-year international career with 252 caps, which is fifth all-time in U.S. history and 184 goals. 
Her final game for USA will come on December 16th against China PR for the last game of their 10-game victory tour. Also retiring from the team are midfielders Shannon Box and Lauren Holiday, who have been vital to the team's success. Box, who has also been playing soccer professionally for 15 years, currently has 191 caps and 27 goals. She will walk away from the team with three Olympic gold medals and a World Cup victory, as well as memories of being the captain of the FIFA Women's World All-Star Team and being named MVP of the Algarve Cup in 2004 and 2006. Holiday, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, made her international debut in 2007 against Germany, has 130 caps and 24 goals, including a volley in the 2015 Women's World Cup final that would turn out to be the game winner. Congratulations to the Royals for winning the World Series in five games on Sunday night. The Royals were able to fight back in multiple games to beat the Mets at City Field. This is just the Royals' second win in franchise history. That's all I have for Pro Sports this week. I'm Samara Rosenfeld, Ashley and Josh. Back to you. Thanks, Samara. I know how upset she is as yeah. a Mets fan that they did not win the World Series. Exactly. I know I'm going to see her around campus storming red, <laughs> you know. But I know. Everybody I, can't always win it. Exactly. I was rooting for them, for Samara. I wasn't. I wasn't. Well, anyway, that's all we have for this week's episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Ashley Williams. And I'm Josh Swift. And please don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at WC Ram Center. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.